I'm David Williams, president of the Health Business Group and author of the Health Business Blog. Welcome to the first edition of Health Business TV. I got this idea because I made an angel investment today in a company that works with YouTube videos. It actually has nothing to do with healthcare, but it gave me the idea. I'm hoping that this is an auspicious day, Friday the 13th, uh, for the sake of my investment and the launch of this new TV show. Well, the highlight of my healthcare week was an invitation only healthcare, enterprise healthcare summit that Castlight Health held in New York City. They've been hyping the event for a while, and I was kind of excited earlier on when I received this box in the mail. Now, I thought it was a shoebox or a book or something like that, but when I opened it up, there was something interesting inside, which was the first aid kit. Kind of a fancy one, actually, metal, and uh, it has all sorts of neat stuff in there, so I know it was going to be exciting. It was held downtown uh, New York in Soho, and they had some pretty exciting uh, speakers that were there. Castlight, as you may know, is a transparency company I've been following for a long time. I did uh, interviews with uh, Dina Bravada and others. Uh, she's the chief medical officer from Castlight. They went public. Uh, there was a high-flying IPO. The stock has come down to earth a little bit since, but they're really trying to put their footprint out there as more than a transparency company. So they introduced a whole uh, set of different uh, uh, solutions. But they had some uh, big names there, including uh, Bill Clinton. They had Magic Johnson. They had uh, Toby Cosgrove, who's the uh, head of the, of the Cleveland Clinic. And they also had Steve Forbes, the, uh, 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 the head of Forbes and also former uh, candidate for president. While I was there, I had a chance to uh, mix and mingle with uh, various folks. A lot of uh, big employers were there who are very interested in using Castlight uh, to reduce costs and, and uh, make sure quality is where it needs to be. And so I asked a question to a couple of them uh, regarding the Affordable Care Act and its effect on part-time employment. And in particular, there's this argument out there that some opponents of the Affordable Care Act have put forth that says, you know, the ACA is a job killer because it's going to keep everybody in part-time employment or get employers to uh, push full-time employees down into, into part-time role. What I found is that the truth was a little bit more nuanced than that. And in fact, what I heard from the employers is that they are uh, making sure that people who are part-time, maybe they're going to be careful not to let them get up to hitting the threshold of hours for full-time. As a result, they're spreading the hours of the part-time workers around some more. And that's actually good for uh, retention uh, of employees because when people have uh, predictable hours and more hours they're likely to stay. So I thought that was an interesting point. Uh, there wasn't all that much controversy at this event. It was pretty well orchestrated, but I did think it was interesting that uh, Toby Cosgrove in, in sitting in on a panel uh, described how he thought it would be a good idea uh, to have providers do more consolidation, in other words, for the Cleveland Clinic to perhaps take over uh, various hospitals uh, nearby. That raised some eyebrows, and uh, in particular, uh, somebody from a health plan mentioned that, gee, when we've seen uh, hospitals consolidate, it tends to lead to higher prices, uh, even if maybe their costs go down. So in that vein, it was interesting that Cosgrove decided this week that he was not going to put his, uh, he was going to take his name out of the ring, uh, for consideration to be the head of the VA, even though the VA already has all the hospitals uh, consolidated. But I guess he wanted to take a little bit of a, a, an easier job now that he's in his 70s rather than trying to work with the, with the VA. I actually do think some of the VA hospitals, uh, the VA system is being picked on a bit too much. There was an article uh, earlier this week or last week in the Boston Globe that was talking about, and the Wall Street Journal talking about, uh, the quality of the VA hospital in Boston compared to those in, in Phoenix. Boston's very high, Phoenix is much lower. Well, part of the issue is that in Massachusetts, veterans have other places to go. Most have insurance through their employer or through a generous uh, Medicaid expansion that we've had here for some time, uh, whereas in uh, Arizona and some other states, the VA really is the only place uh, that, uh, that they're able to, to go. So Although I think the Boston VA Hospital is terrific, and I can't vouch for Phoenix being wonderful, the VA is operating in a, in a broader context. Now this weekend, they'll have the Democratic Convention in Massachusetts to determine who's going to get enough um, uh, delegates to appear on the primary ballot in September. Earlier this year, I interviewed uh, all nine candidates for governor of Massachusetts about health care policy. You can see the results on Health Business Blog. 
www.thomasmoreyoungmedia.com. So this week I published an ebook that includes interviews with all of them. Now there's some big shots uh, there from the healthcare world. Don Berwick, who used to run Medicare, uh, Charlie Baker, uh, head of Harvard Pilgrim, Evan Falchuk, uh, who ran Best Doctors, and a couple of others with healthcare ties, Jeff McCormick, an independent, and he is a venture capitalist um, who has done investments in healthcare. Joe Avalone on the Democratic side is a, is a surgeon. Even those that don't have so much of a healthcare background, uh, Martha Coakley, Steve Grossman, Mark Fisher, and Juliet Kayyem, all have uh, something to say. So feel free to download the ebook from the Health Business blog. I also had an interesting conversation uh, earlier this week with Vikram Bakru from a company called First Opinion. It's a, it's a mobile app that uses text messaging to communicate uh, with physicians. It's a very low cost uh, way to have consultations. I'll be recording that uh, interview and publishing that on the Health Business blog next week. So that wraps it up for our first edition of Health Business TV. Let me know what you think of it uh, in the comment section. Check out more on the Health Business blog. And until next time, farewell.